Uh, I'm a senior consultant at Nudesic. Pornima is a principal consultant at Nudesic. I, uh, well, she, she's, she's my coworker who's not here, and I uh, apologize for getting her title wrong. So we're going to talk about uh, multi-container app services here. I have a few slides. We have a uh, demo. We're going to talk about basically the CI, CD aspect of this um, as well. Uh, so um, I, so anyway, uh, what is an app service uh, for anyone not familiar with an app service, right? So uh, it's basically the the pad thing uh, for 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 storing stuff on uh, for 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 having web pages on on uh, on, uh, on on Azure, right? And you can kind of think of it as uh, the equivalent of an IS uh, virtual directory on like a traditional Windows server, right? And and traditionally that that's how your app service used to start, right? You had a app service plan, which was a piece of Azure compute, and you had an app service, and basically there was a directory you could deploy to it via Git or via FTP or what have you, um, and you could, uh, um, you know, uh, you, you, you could, you, you, you could uh, basically, uh, you know, you put your files there and, and uh, you know, it, it ran, uh, you know, .NET, it had a PHP interpreter, it had, it had Python, it had some Java, and, you know, you, you ran your web apps on it, right? Um, then there came the idea. Well, what if what if you needed something more than that, right? And you can do a basically a container-based uh, app service. So that that was that was the next level. So this was uh, just a single container. So anything you could stick in a Docker container, uh, be it a Windows container or a, a Windows uh, um, image or a uh, Linux image, you just made that container. You ship it up there. And basically, the only the only rule with these containers is is, is, is you can only uh, you know have one port publicly available. The the uh, the the HP port and 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 it ha and 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 um, and uh, my, you know uh, the, the app handle the DSL uh, for you that that's the only rule with these things uh, but you can have other things running on the containers um, you just you just uh, can't publicly expose them you can't use this as like a you know you can't well you can uh, do SSH you can do limited SSH for for yourself but you can't like you know have like a public shell account or anything like that you can't you know run uh, you know whatever you know your database publicly or what have you. Um, but the next the next step basically was, was uh, which I'm going to talk about today is multiple containers and app service, and then uh, we're going to talk a little about uh, multiple container app service with Azure Storage at the back end. Uh, that's not something I'm going to I have a demo prepared for, but but that's a uh, that 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 is a thing you can do. Um, but uh, basically, why why would you want to do yeah why why would you want to why would you want to do a multi container app service why 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 would you want to do that? And uh, my my answer to that would be like cheap dev environments, right? So normally you have uh, you know, uh, you know, in your 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 test or your 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 you know shared development environment, right? You're going to have um, a separate. You know, you have your app service. You'll have your Redis in front of you. You'll have your your SQL Server. You'll have all those. You know, you have all those pieces of Azure, and uh, you know they they can cost you know some money. And and you know uh, what what your client, what your budget is, and and who's paying for that. You know, uh, can be uh, defined. What that that you know uh, you know what that amount of money is. You know the 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 the, the uh, the, the the cheapest like you know production uh, piece of of Azure App Service is like seventy six a month. Um, you know there's like the free one, there's the fourteen dollar one, but I guess the 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 one that Microsoft would recommend you actually use for production is like seventy six a month. Uh, you know which is if if you're a Fortune five hundred company, that's nothing. If 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 you're a developer yourself, um, you know that 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 um, you know um, not uh, you know that 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 that's a uh, that that that's a little more money, and if you're you know want to spin up where every developer gets their own development environment, maybe you just want to give them that seventy six dollar, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, app server instead of setting them up, you know, a, a, with the seventy six dollar one plus you know the the database plus plus the the Redis setup or what have you. Um, and another big use case, which I won't demo today, but I think is a big use case for it, is like pre canned apps like CMSs, like WordPress and .NET Newt. Actually, if you want to. If you go to the Microsoft uh, website and you go to looking at like the the demos for 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 what how to set up a multi container app, they're gonna they're gonna show you how to do it with 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 WordPress and like WordPress is like the ideal thing, especially with uh, .NET uh, with a uh, with a uh, what do you call it with um with uh, Azure Storage, right? Because you probably uh, if you have you're running a WordPress site on Azure, you probably want to put uh, Redis in front of it, right? So you want another container in there, but you don't you don't need a full blown Redis. You just need you know uh, just just uh, you know the the basic Redis. You know, in memory Redis in your app container will 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 speed up your WordPress enough. Um, you probably want to, you know, for some production, you know, use the 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 MySQL, um, uh, you know, uh, SQL uh, Azure MySQL, you know, where where you get the free backups and all that stuff for setup. But but you can if you want to spend a little more time if 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 your 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 you know is if your time uh, if you want to 
you know, spend a little more time setting setting it up where you're you're running the backup manually. Uh, you can you can certainly just do do everything in, inside of that. Uh, but that's a really big use case, and also that's a big use case for using uh, uh, backing backing your app service with with a storage account. Um, and yeah, like just even adding Redis cache, et cetera, to existing app. Maybe you just have an app. Maybe 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 you just need like a, a there there's some caching technology, whatever memcache, Redis, or whatever. You just want to run that on another container. Um, you know, it's not a thing, and you just want a simple orchestration of you have your app going to the one container, uh, and then you have you know Redis or what have you. Uh, you know, you put that in in your app service, uh, and and uh, you know you can you can uh, you know not have to 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 pay for that piece of Azure. Um, any questions so far before I talk about Azure storage? Okay, that's it. Okay, take the note. Um, and yeah, basically, why Azure storage? So you have two two ways to uh, to integrate Azure storage with with a with a uh, app uh, with with a web app service. And this this actually works for uh, whether or not you're doing multi container, or single container, um, or, or or no container, just you know the whatever the the, the default method. Um, you can access data on blob containers, uh, and that's a read only. Uh, access and then there's file shares, um, and this is probably not uh, so. So as far as like read-only access to blob containers, uh, that's probably not a thing that you'd want to like directly uh, do in a lot of like production cases. You probably want to take the time because because since you're paying for Azure storage and you're paying for blob containers, you know they, they you you probably want to set that up with the multi uh, redundancy, and you want you'd, you'd want to just you know uh, probably just proxy out. Um, Connections to to those blob uh, containers, so 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 you you get the 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 you know you use that kind of like as, as a, a uh, you know cont, um, CDN uh, you know take advantage of the fact that you know you can you can offload that uh, access you know just just directly link out to to those those, those blob URLs publicly like I probably want to do something like that but if I just want to say okay I, I just happen to have some images maybe I'm making uh, you know an internal website to to you know uh, you know share some photos or something you know inside my my Enterprise and and they're you know here's a blob container where these photos go on or or they could be whatever you know F, you know uh, Excel reports what what have you um, and and they're there you can just sit there and say you know some some other process will push things in this blob container and uh, you know I have an app over here that will just you know uh, share them out it'll, it'll it'll list them and it'll dynamically uh, you know build a little web page list out the the those those reports those images uh, and put them in and the users can go view the images or download the reports or, or, or what have you. And also for serving large amounts of data, just, just from a pricing point of view, um, you know, uh, you know, if, if, if I don't need a large amount of compute, but I, I do just need to have a large amount of data. So if I'm, if I'm hosting a WordPress site, it's a big WordPress site, you know, just, just a big, big blog, you know, that I'm running for, you know, years or, or, or you know, um, you know, that, that I have just years and years of, Content on I, I have lots of images and, and what have you, but but you know it's not getting like a huge amount of traffic, um, or or you know it's not doing anything, anything big. I, I I need lots of storage, right? So I'm just gonna why am I gonna pay for the biggest piece of 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 of, an, of, of a uh, app service plan that's gonna give me all this memory and all this the CPU I don't need? I, I just need storage, right? And also for like just backing up containers and 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 access access to to uh, files, right? Um, so I I can I can um, put the stuff in. Uh, Basically, yeah. So if, if I if I'm storing all my data, if I'm storing all the data uh, that that you know you know is not being stored in like my version control, it's not my app code that's being like just uh, put in by by a CI CD process. Uh, and I got that data. If that data is going on to if that data is uh, being uh, a uh, a file share, which so my file share is a read write, I can I can take that file share and I can mount it on you know you know a, a, a another you know I, I I can run my backup. I could I could back it up to. Uh, on-premises machine, I can I can uh, you know mount that to a local driver or what have you um, to do that. So so that that gives me just just more options to to do my my backups there. So that that's why I was. Hey Justin, quick yeah. question. Oh. Finally Morning, got in here. the meeting. So okay. yeah. Hey, so you mentioned about blob container, right? Is that actually a thing? So can you just go and create a blob container on the fly in Azure, or is, is there a setup to do that? Well, you'd have to set up an Azure storage account, but yeah, then you could just make a blob container there, and then you could mount it to the. So yeah, you okay? So so if you're using Azure storage, you have to have a separate Azure storage account. Um, so you'd have to set that up in the portal, and then you'd have to connect to say that this Azure uh, this this blob container. Um, you know, you'd have to go into your your web app in in the portal uh, or via your, your your Terraform, what have you, and, and say that I want to mount that that blob container uh, uh, on onto the onto the uh, App service in, in, in sub subfolder. 
Okay. And the same thing for file shares. Yeah, the same thing for file shares. You have to go in the Azure storage. You have to define a, a file share there, and then then you mount it. And, and uh, you know the file shares you can you can mount to like just just you know via, via Windows file share to you know your laptop or any server or what have you. Blob containers. You know if the 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 normal way to access them uh, as, as a user is, is through the Azure storage account. Um, so uh, app service client server. So what, one prerequisite, if you, if you are going to use uh, storage here, um, whether whether you're just going to use the storage that's built in the app plan and you, you want to you be able to access uh, um, uh, some files inside your container uh, just through that, or you want to have that shared through the uh, through a storage account is you have to set in your, your configuration settings in the portal. You have to set your websites enable app service storage uh, variable, and you just have to set that to true, uh, and, and that that will uh, uh, be what you need to to set that. And then you'll have to set another variable. We'll, we'll talk about that in the Docker Compose when we get to the demo. Um, now it is time for the demo. Uh, any questions before I start the demo? Okay. So over here we have okay. So normally when you run a when you think of a, a multi-container uh, orchestration locally, right? What, what do we have? We have a Docker Compose file. So we have a series of so over here I, I have here I have a Docker Compose file. Uh, I'm pulling down uh, an nginx proxy server, right? So nginx is is a uh, is, is like a very bare bones uh, web server that runs on Linux, um, and uh, and I'm setting this up to to run as a proxy server, um, and then I have another. I have an MVC app. So this is just uh, an MVC app I I, I wrote. Um, then we have a Postgres server over here, and then we have Adminer, which is just a web app that you can use to access uh, access the 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 uh, the uh, what do you call it the um, uh, Postgres database uh, on the web page. Now remember, like I said, uh, the, you can only uh, have one port exposed on your your uh, your app service, uh, basically, and by default, unless you change some settings, it's going to be whatever 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 uh, service you want to to be like your 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 web app that exposed in your multi container app service. You just you just expose that on port eighty, so that'll just be set up on port eighty. Uh, Adminer set up on on uh, by default runs on on a uh, higher port. Um, and I'll and how do we solve that problem? Well, remember I said we had a. Uh, Inject proxy, so it, it's a proxy server. It's proxy to your other apps. Um, so over here, we set this up. Excuse me, I'm still seeing your slide presentation. That's what I'm sorry. seeing. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. That's okay. Okay. Um, okay. So we go. Thank you very much. Right. Okay, so let's let's start over. Uh, so, uh, like I said at the beginning, uh, you know, whenever you're dealing with uh, multi-container, um, when you're not talking about like a Kubernetes swarm where you have like multi, you know, we have like a cluster app, when you just have like a a stack of apps where you have a, a you know a web app and a database and a what have you, uh, you know, we we think about a Docker Compose file, right? So it's the same thing. So this Docker Compose file is uh, what's going to go up on the up on 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 the the server on the portal. Um, and this is this this over here. So we we have uh, an nginx proxy over here, uh, which which will listen on port eighty. And like I said, by default, um, so the the app service will only just let you listen on one port. It 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 won't let you do any kind of trickery where you can just have multiple ports running on it. It it it, it you know it tries pretty hard to let you just run one web app. And the way you get around that is if, if you run a, a proxy server, if you want to have multiple uh, you know containers, you know dealing with different subdirectories. Uh, so over here, this is just an MDC app I wrote, which is which is like literally right over here um, in a folder over here. This is this is some MDC app, um, and this is Postgres uh, database, and and this is a UI called Adminer. Um, and so we we make this we make our proxy server. So when when you're doing a multi-container app service and and you're going to have like multi multiple apps, so a lot of times this is a common thing you would do for. Uh, Node JS, like if you're doing a Node backend and a Node Node frontend, you'd probably have two. Uh, containers uh, running for one for your API and one for your your front end. So you'd you'd have nginx on the front end. Um, you'd, you'd have you'd have nginx being the actual front end thing that's processing out both over here, right? So, um, so we go to our nginx comp config over here, and we say that uh, 
going to proxy out. So uh, yeah, basically we're going to say uh, uh, for adminer we're going to we're going to we're going to proxy out to adminer eighty eighty. So if we go to um, I'm sorry, our Docker Compose. Um, so inside of a Docker Compose, all of these containers when they're they're running, uh, they see each other by the the name of the service. So so. Um, if this guy wants to call out to adminer, it 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 sees the container with a host name of adminer, right? So it it can do that. Um, if you want to call out your DB, your DB host name is just going to be called DB. Um, so we go here. So we have that set up over there, and then we have um, actually we here we're we're, we're just proxying out the, the local index over here. Um, and then we have. Uh, Docker file for Nginx. All right, so we we have our we have our HTML folder which we just have our basic um, HTML5 boilerplate over here in our Nginx uh, container, um, and we have our our Docker file over here for our, our Nginx over here, um, and this gets pushed out and basically. See if you go to this website over here. So, so here's the Azure portal of it. Uh, there, there the Docker Compose, uh, slightly modified Docker Compose. Uh, that doesn't get pushed up by the CIC. I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but here, here, there. If we go to the website, we have our uh, web app. Um, we have we have our HTML over here, and then if we go to uh, Azure slash adminer, it will read it will proxy just like just like we told it to on. Here it will it will uh, so our adminer over here uh, will set with with our proper proxying forward uh, to to adminer eight thousand which is where adminer normally runs and obviously uh, we should not store passwords in plain text or use simple passwords but there's nothing here and this will disappear. Um, That was working. It really was. Okay. Um, oh. Yes. There we go. Okay, so we can go in here. Um, all right, so we have that. We have our database. So, so we have we have our, our data there. Um, okay. So, the other uh, thing. So, in in a Docker Compose, we we traditionally list our volumes. So, once you set the so actually, let's go back to configuration. So, like I, I said before in the slides, but to, to show you how it is here. Um, whenever whenever you have a single or multi container app and you want you want storage, uh, you want you want you want to be able to see the files on on the exposed volumes. Uh, you have to set the yeah, website enable app storage to true over there. Um, and then you go to deployment center. Um, so in our deployment center, we have our um, so actually let's let's go through all the things here. Um, so you can Say if you want a single container or a document, so multi container is called Docker Compose, which still is in preview. It's been, been in preview for a while. I, I, I don't know when it's going to move beyond preview, but I mean, stuff is relatively stable uh, here. Um, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's uh, I think it's stable. You know, you, you, can, you can consult your own risk tolerance. Um, and you can say your registry source can be either an Azure, con an Azure container registry, which would be a, a registry that you, you would create in Azure and you would post your own containers to. Uh, the public Docker Hub containers, or uh, private registries, and that could, private registry could be any any registry, um, you know, and any registry that's publicly available on on the internet. So it could be a, a you know private Docker Hub, or you you could set up your own, you know, whatever Docker container repository you can. Uh, but I think the the common use cases would be like, let's say you were you were doing like some some real vanilla like a WordPress setup, you'd probably just use Docker Hub or the Azure Container Registry. Now, if you use Azure Container Registry or private 
repository, it's going to fall back. Uh, any of these images, you know, it, it'll fall back to. Uh, so, so I don't, I don't have in. Uh, actually, let's let's go. So show you my ACR. Um, I don't have like Postgres, and I don't have a uh, the admin in here. It's going to fall back to. It's going to try there, and it's going to it's going to fall back to. Uh, Oh, I'm not sharing my, I'm not sharing my browser, am I? I'm going to, I'm going to share my. No, I can't see your browser. I still see your Visual Studio Code. Okay, I'm, I'm going to share my. Okay. It's happy Friday, folks. Okay. So. Tell me about it. Okay, so. Uh, so anyway, uh, so this, this, this was okay. So. Uh, so just just to resummarize everything. Um, so when you're in your your container, right? You, you're in your container. Uh, if you want to mess with the Docker settings, you go to your deployment center. And in your deployment center, you have uh, your options here, whether you want to do a single container or multi container. So we're talking about multi container here. Um, your source, uh, you can. Uh, I'm going to set up to build it from a container registry. You can also, uh, so we're using GitHub Actions to actually publish the containers, uh, but but there, there's uh, so that that's there. I guess there's another. This, I believe it's brand new. I didn't see this. This is actually brand new. This option over here. But anyway, uh, your source here can be a Azure Container Registry, which is your own, your own like uh, Docker, like private Docker Hub inside Azure Docker Hub. So public containers or the private registry could be anything else. So. Normally, you'd want to like in, in most cases as a you know Microsoft centric Azure person, you'd want to use Docker Hub if you're just setting up like a vanilla like you know WordPress setup or something like that where everything's going to be public, or you know .NET Nuke or, or or what have you. And if you but if you wanted to uh, you know add your own containers, you'd use use an Azure Container Registry over there, right? Um, so then, uh, to show you what the the Container Registry looks like. Um, In your container, we have uh, we have an nginx proxy and and our, our our template web app. We have so we we don't have admin or we don't have uh, Postgres over there. And like I said, it's just going to fall back if it sees in your Docker Compose. Uh, it's going to fall back for those. So so this one is going to use the the best practice. This is going to use the uh, new best practice over here, and if it, it'll uh, fall back to you know. I have the Azure right over here. It'll it'll fall back to uh, um, Postgres. It'll it'll fall back to uh, uh, you know uh, image Postgres. It'll fall back to the the Docker Hub Postgres. It'll fall back to the uh, you know just the, the the public Azure right over here. So anyway, that that all gets pushed out over there. Um, now uh, saving stuff. This this is a thing that blew up on me, and it was uh, was working. And now it's not, of course. Um, but in in a multi-container setup, uh, if you want your volumes, you have to set up your. Uh, you can only go inside of your uh, your web app. So actually, let's just. Okay, so. Um, if you ever want to do file transfer to a uh, app service, you have to do it via FTPS, which is not. SSH FTP is FTP over SSL, and uh, I don't believe Microsoft provides a client for doing that. Uh, some people, there's a client called FileZilla that you can use. Uh, I don't recommend that. Actually, don't. It, 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 it's had massive spyware issues on it. So if you're using FileZilla, uh, I would I would suggest not doing that. Um, WinSCP is a good one, and that that's a good one to use. Um, I use a very strange one called uh, Far Manager, uh, which uh, is developed in Russia. So I wouldn't recommend downloading that anymore based on current events, you know, because they have a lot of cyber stuff going around there, but that, that's what I normally use. So um, when you go and FTP into that uh, thing over there by whatever your account, you're going to, your, normally your files would be in your site WW root. And this, I couldn't get working. Um, I apologize for that, but anyway, they will, To go here. Um,
I'm try and make one more change, and we're going to actually talk about how to reload this one over here. Um, okay, so whenever you make these changes, you got to like. Um, so whenever you make these changes, when you ever change this file, uh, so there's two ways to, to to trigger a change. Whenever you change this file, or whenever you uh, write a new write a new um, image to the ACR, uh, and and we'll get into the uh, the CIC aspect of this on GitHub uh, next. Um, but when you hit that, uh, but so the one way is we hit save over here, and that'll update. And the other, if you go to these web proxies, right? There is a web um, it's, So as you can see over here, uh, for the there the uh, webhook for the multi-container app over here, which is basically saying that every time um, every time we push to the container, it's going to trigger this webhook, and that webhook over there is basically. The webhook down here, and this gets automatically populated as soon as I like make this Docker info. The first time it's going to do this, uh, but once I do this, it's going to trigger that a change can be made. But then I've got to like uh, usually it's, it's like a lazy load thing. So now like I'm going to try to hit it, and it'll take a while. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's go. So that should be reloading. To watch the logs and see if so I made some changes there and it's going to reload and now we can see that you have to basically you have, you have to actually hit the basically if, if you're developing on your own uh, you'll have to go and fail during startup okay Let's see what we screwed up over here Oh, look at that. Um, I guess I no longer have access to Adminer because I repulled it. Okay, so I'm glad I showed you a working demo before that blew up. Um, so one of the current problems now with Docker is uh, um, they, they they switched to a model where where you don't have uh, access to uh, uh, where, where 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 they're moving away from a free model, uh, and they they were making some changes. Uh, and uh, basically, they used to only limit you to to, to pull Docker Hub. Uh, pull pull from Docker Hub like so many times a a, a day, uh, and now I guess I don't know if I overloaded that amount of times, um, or we just can't do that anymore. Okay, that's interesting. Um, but as you can see over here, pulling Adminer, it wouldn't let me pull. Unauthorized, incorrect username and password. Okay. Um, so uh, anyway, so so. Uh, that This is a private uh, repo. I'll try to. Yeah, this this one's going to be a private repo. Um, that's fine. Okay. But just to show you the actions over here. So um, as you can see, this is so this is what I had open in .NET Code before, right? We have our our uh, VS Code and our new Desic template and and all that. Um, and anything, uh, basically, if you want to do an action in GitHub, um. You just have to, in your .github workflows, make a YAML file like this, and these are called GitHub Actions, and you can read more about how to do them over here. Uh, but basically, I set up some, um, on a push and a pull, I, I go and I run .net and I build it, and then to deploy to Azure, I'm just posting to uh, GitHub over here, right? So so every time I, I, I do a deploy to Azure, um, we go here, we just we just log into the server, and then we're just doing a, a, a we're building a container and we're pushing the container over here. So 
that's how we're doing a CI CD basically over here. So it's it's it, it, you know normally your 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 normal CI CD uh, your normal CI process and and for your your uh, CD process um, when you do the multi multi app container in, in the simplest mode uh, like this you can all you have to do is just just update um, the container to to the registry and the next time someone hits the site it'll it'll reload the page and then hopefully there won't be the the Docker problem to to kind of blow blow that up. Um, over here, but anyway, so let's let's go make a small change and watch this kick off. Uh. Actually, we'll remove admin or so we can have the page come up again. Um. Okay, so we go here. Um. Okay, and I'm just going to push to to actually we're going to we're going to make a branch here. Okay. So, okay. So we've made some changes. We're just going to push those changes up. We're going to do a compare. We're going to open up a pull request over here. Um, type in a demo, folks. I hope somebody left. Okay, so we've got that. So we've got that. Um, and we can just watch this, this build. Okay. So actually, yeah. So while while we what, any anyone have any uh, questions about anything? Okay, cool. So we got that. So we did the build. We didn't do the deploy to Azure Park uh, because we, we only do that when we merge our pull request. Change. Squash and merge. Confirm squash and merge. And now it's going to run through and it's going to uh, actually do a uh, – now it's going to go to main and it only just it, – and it only does the deploy part on main just – because so we say uh, if get if get event name equals push right so what we do is we say that on a uh, so we rely on the fact that we're not gonna um, so we're gonna do it on a github so on a, on a pull request towards main or on a push to main right so so any pull request to main is going to trigger uh, so anytime we anytime we we push to the the pull request, which is going to main, so basically pushing to any branch anywhere that has a pull request to main is going to uh, trigger both the build and deploy. And then we say that that we're going to put an extra check on here that that we only do that for for a push event, and so it's only going to see the push event because it's a, a push to main. So that that's how uh, we do that. Now we're watching it deploy to Azure. And it's just doing a Docker, but basically it's just doing a Docker build uh, on the server, on, on the server.
So has anyone else who's uh, using Docker had the uh, found it painful because of the, the license changes to to Docker and getting your org to buy a license? Is that a, is that a thing that seems that a thing that has been been a, a pain point for other people? Okay, so that's pushed over here. So this is probably going to once again fail again. Um, but what we'll do is we'll just take admin or out of it. Um, go refresh, right? So this is a. So this was at five forty nine. Okay, this is six. Okay, so let's go here. Let's remove. So we're complaining could not get admin, right? So save. Now we should try to repull. Okay, so now we're trying to pull. No, we're not. Force a restart. Okay. is not reloading, is it? That time has not changed. Okay, well. I don't know if I ran out of money or something on this. Why it's not reloading? It should try to reload. Anyway, does anyone uh, anyone have any questions so far?
Anyone have a use case for that they were they were thinking about? Are there, are there any questions? Are there any questions in the chat? Okay. You using caching or Docker? Repo stay under the limo. Okay. How are you? Okay. Uh, Technovation. You said you're using caching on your Docker repo. Uh, how are you doing that? They're like, is that in the Docker Info? I'm not familiar that you could do that. Yes, DevOps can be. Uh, De DevOps, I find, actually be stable when you're not in front of people. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's worth the uh, using Harbor. Okay. Okay, so there's a thing called Harbor. Okay, so I, I guess Harbor is, is the way to, to use it. Yeah, so, uh, um, okay, so I guess there's a thing called Harbor, which you can use to proxy uh, hub.docker.com. Okay, so that's, 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 um, that's, that's good to know. I, I, will, I will look into that. Um, I, I will definitely uh, look into that. Um, Is anyone using uh, storage and anyone using app services for uh, storage fact, um, even for like a single container or for like a non-container? Connecting Azure storage to a web app. So we got a little time left. Okay, so I guess we finished a little early. Um, we can bring that up. So I guess this is what you were talking about. Um, So I guess this is what you were talking about, uh, uh, technovation. Yeah. So um, I was I was unaware of this, but this is a a, a thing we could. Uh, this is probably a thing um, that that, that um, you could explore. I think this is going to become a. Um, I'm I'm hoping Microsoft does does something about the the you know current situation with with, with Docker. You know I, I I you know if you're using Docker you know whatever on on your yeah I, I think you know it, I think it's it's fair that if you're using uh, Docker on your laptop um, you know. On, on a Windows machine, you, you should, you know, whatever, you know, on a in a in in, in a large company, yeah, they should, they should pay the whatever the ten dollars a month license for Docker. I think that 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 is that is uh, fair, and you know, there's also uh, you know, uh, um, there's there's a port or there's a Linux port of it. I think what it's called, forgot what it's called, but you can you probably get that running under WSL. Um, but yeah, I feel like the the current Azure situation is, is is kind of annoying. I feel like you know Microsoft should should strike a deal with with, with Docker. Um, just so when you're on Azure, you publish stuff through Azure, you know, like, you know, whatever, but, um, you know, that, that, that Microsoft, you know, absorbs that and, you know, whatever, you know, pass, you know, just, just, just some license deal where, where Microsoft, you know, gives them some of that cost. Um, but yeah, this, this looks interesting. Uh, thank you for bringing that to, to, uh, my attention. Um, I'll, I'll definitely, uh, look into that. Um. Mm -hmm. um, is the excessive network traffic is, is that a cost thing? Technovation, we're saying for internal the excessive excessive network traffic is that, is that just comes comes out of your Azure bill because is that because it's, it's external stuff or is, it, is that like actually affecting your app performance? So, so the question in the chat was was uh, it was uh, using our speed up pulling same. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Definitely, performance is a, is a it, it does take a while to, to to pull them to pull them down um, and and saving them. Uh, 
Yeah, it, yeah, it, it doesn't have the same level of cache. It, it's not like when you're in your local machine where it has a local cache. That 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 is that is one of the um, annoying things. If, if you look in the log, it, it's always pulling them again and again and again. Um, so. Except when I would like them to start repulling. Um, oh, look, now I was trying to repull. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yes, we have. Okay. Okay, at least we got new errors. Okay, that's a new timestamp. That's good. Okay. Starting image. But yeah, as you can see, like, yeah, it's. it's Trying to pull all the parts of the container like every time. Yes, yeah, so that that is. If, if you're on your like your local machine and you go to, it's not going to repull every time, right? Um, okay. Pulling image adminer. We're not pulling adminer anymore. We said not to pull adminer anymore, right? Web. Okay, so we don't have Adminer, so it was containing that Adminer. Yes, you could like deploy by unsecure FTP, but, but that would that would just be I would I would definitely make sure you use that itself. Um, All right. I mean, that's about all I got. If no one has any questions, I, I apologize. My my demos are not going great, but I, I hope uh, you know you got the uh, gist of it. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you all for coming, and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day at Philly Cold Camp, and everyone have a great Friday.